Welcome back everybody. So this week we're going to focus on data visualization all in Python. And we're actually going to look into the pie chart. So we're going to look into how to create this pie chart with the hover and the text in, in, inside the hover, the different colors, the legend, how to divide up the different slices, how to put these numbers up here with the percentages, how to do the title, the pie hole, really everything you want to do with a pie chart all in Python. Typically, you use a pie chart if you want to differentiate or see the different proportions between certain values um, or certain data sets. So in this case, we're going to look over the coronavirus data set, which is right here. Uh, download it below the video. We're going to look into uh, the date column. We're going to use the state column and the uh, negative uh, coronavirus um, uh, results and then the number of deaths. And we're going to use this code also below the video. And in this code, we're going to import different libraries. We're going to uh, use Plotly in this case and Plotly Express, which is very similar to Seaborn, but I believe is better. It's easier to use and just more user friendly. So I'm excited to teach you how to use Plotly Express. If you don't have it, just download pip install uh, Plotly 4.5.4 or a higher version. That should be OK. Uh, Plotly Express comes in this library. So just don't forget to import these libraries. And um, below the video in the description, there are different links. So click on all that link, all those links, so you can follow along. Click on the code link, so you can download it. Click on this link, where you can see different examples of different pie charts, all in Plotly. Um, how to do colors, it's just different examples here. You see all of these. Uh, you'll go into the Plotly Express. Um, Pi method, so you can look at all the different parameters that we're going to go over. So you can feel free to pause and read over this while we go over each parameter. And over this link as well, which is going to be towards the end for the layout. And, and that's it. And that'll be a lot easier for you to follow. All right. So let's start. Let's dive right into it and learn today how to create um, an, a very detailed pie chart with uh, Plotly all in Python. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, filter the data. And here I'm just importing the, the, the Excel sheet into a, a pandas data frame. I'm changing the date time. So the date is a pandas uh, date um, column. And then I'm just changing the dates into a string. I only want the March 17. I don't want other days, only March 17. And then I'm just saying give me uh, data that's only where where the deaths where the states have only five or more deaths so what it means we end up with a very small data frame if we print it of about four states california florida new york and washington that we're going to play around with within this pie chart you can put more states if you want i just wanted four so we're going to do that today okay so we are going to um uh, call the method pi from Plotly Express. PX is Plotly Express. And we're going to go over all these parameters. See, from here all the way here, uh, one by one. Okay, so the first parameter is the data frame. So the data frame is going to be obviously uh, the DF that is, is right here that we, that we uh, filtered. The values and the state sorry, the values and the names are going to be death and state. So the values is what you use to differentiate the different slices. You're going to say slice the pie up according to the number of deaths. Okay, so that's why when you look at it, let's make this actually smaller. That's why when you look at it, you see here that 15% uh, of all the deaths are in the state of California, 66% are in the state of Washington, 9% are in the state of uh, New York, and the last one, Florida, has 8%. That's because we divided all the values by the death column, and the names are going to be the states. So it just is telling us that also each slice refers to a different state. Now, we also want to divide the colors into different states, um, and that's why we have the different colors in each state, and we have this legend, is because we divide the colors into different states. Now, the colors, make, make note of this, it's important. Differentiate markers by, uh, by discrete markers by color. So it's very important that the color, that the value of the column is a discrete uh, value. So you don't want to put number of deaths here in the color. 
Uh, you don't want to put number of uh, negative uh, diagnoses like uh, zero point something. It has to be discrete because that's how the pie chart, it's a lot easier for the pie chart to divide the colors when it's a discrete value. In this case, it's a state, this one or that one, or maybe discrete um, one to four or, or days, or whatever discrete value you have, but as long as it's not continuous. Okay, so the next row is going to be, we're going to set the marker colors according to the colors we want. If I did not put this, let's say I'm going to hash this out, then I would just have default colors. Let's see what the default colors are. Red, blue, these colors, right? But I can go here and I can say, don't give me the def default colors. Give me the colors that I want. So on hashtag this, and I'm going to say that the first value, I want it to be red then the second value green and blue and orange. So now if I save this and I run it, those are the colors that I'm gonna have and in that order, red, green, blue, and orange. So let's take a look. Great, so now you see that it's red, green, blue, and orange. That's the order I want it. But I could put black, I could put any color that I want in here. Okay, now let's say I don't remember the order of the values of the states. I don't know which comes first or which comes second because there's many states in there. I can also map the colors. This is this parameter, color discrete map. And to map the colors, I can just say the state with the value of, or the state that's called WA, I want it to have a yellow color. And the California, I want it to have red. So this mapping is, is a dictionary of key, which is the name of the state or the value. And yellow is the value, and, and value is actually the color. So the key is the state, and the value of that dictionary is the color. And now, so I save this, and let's see if we have, we get those colors, which is yellow, red, black, and brown. Great. So you see we get yellow, red, black, and brown according to the colors and the states that we wanted them to be. Okay, so let's hashtag this. The next thing is the hover name negative. This is values appear in bold in the hover tooltip. So I'm going to say that any that from the negative column right here that says negative, these are results of the, of the coronavirus test that came back negative. I want that to be highlighted in the hover tooltip. That's why when you hover here, the first thing that you see is 7981. That is highlighted, that's bolded in the hover tooltip. 5506, you see that's bolded. Here in Florida, we have 940 negative uh, results from the coronavirus tests. Okay, hover data is another thing you can put in your um, in your in your pie chart, and what this means is values that appear as extra data in the hover tooltip. So this just allows me to put extra data in the hover tooltip. Hover is only only going to give you data that is uh, that you've actually that you actually put in the code, that you actually ask them in the parameters. So if I ask values to be death and names to be state and colors to be state, that's the only values that is going to appear on, on the hover or on the pie chart. But if I want the user to see other things, this is where I put it into. I put hover data. I also want the user to see the positive column, the positive um, tests. So now you can see it. Now you see that the positive is 1,700 in New York. Now you can see that in California, the positive cases are 483. It's just another way to add data into the hover um, tooltip right here. Okay, the other thing is custom data. Custom data, I'm not gonna execute this code because you won't see a difference. You're not gonna see anything in the pie chart, but this is telling you that you can add values that are extra data to be used in different callbacks. If you don't know uh, Dash, it doesn't mean a lot to you. But in the future, when you learn Dash with this um, charming data channel, you'll see that this allows you to interact with certain values of the, of the, of the chart, in this case, the pie chart. So it just says that uh, the column with the total deaths, I want this column to, uh, to appear in the memory of the pie chart. Remember, the only data that we have in the pie chart right now that we can see is death and state. It may be negative if we add Oops, what did I do? And maybe negative if we add um, if we add this hover name uh, to it. But total, you're not going to see it because we, we didn't plot it. We didn't put anything in there. So now I'm saying mem memorize or have the computer uh, 
total column uh, in, in the memory of the computer so we can actually use it for different callbacks and um, in drop downs or different things. Okay, so I'm going to hashtag this out. Let's hashtag this out as well. And let's go into the labels. So this allows us, this labels allow us to change any label that we have on the pie chart or next to the pie chart to different names. So for example, the state, I, I'm, I'm going to say here, the state label that we know that's in the hover, because um, we have color uh, state and name state, I want that to be called the state. I don't want it to be called state, I just want it to be called the state. So what happens here, let's run it. You can see that, actually we don't even need to run it. You see how it's in the middle, it says the state and it doesn't say state. That's because I changed the label. And you can change the label positive, you can change the label death. If a legend had a legend title, you can also send, uh, change the legend title. So this is an opportunity you'll see in different uh, charts in Plotly. It's an opportunity for you to change the labels because sometimes the data is not clean, so you can actually call it whatever you want. Same thing here. The next thing is the title. So the title you can see is coronavirus in the United States, which is right here, coronavirus in the United States. Oh, this actually just ran. So you see the state with a capital capital T, which is what we put here, the state. Okay, and then the template. Uh, Plotly Express has several built-in templates, I think about 10 or so, and these are all the templates. I chose the presentation template, which is right here, but you can play around with it and put different templates in there. Um, the dark template is, is pretty cool, so you might wanna, where is the dark template here? Uh, dark, this one, so you might want to use that as well. But this is the presentation template, and it gives me a title that's in the middle and kind of these colors. It's kind of cool. Okay, now you can obviously play around with the width and the height and the whole. So width is, these are pixels. I chose it to be 800 pixels and the height 600 pixels, but I can change it. I can say give me uh, 1,000 pixels for height and give me uh, width 1,300. And if I save it, um, we'll see that the pie chart is a lot bigger. The hole as well is how big do you want the hole to be inside the pie chart. You can put hole zero and you won't see a hole. But you, the values are from zero to one. So anywhere from zero, 0 0.1 to 0 0.999 or, or one. So this is width 1300 and height 1000. So you can see the pie chart is a lot, lot bigger than the previous one right here. And the hole is 0 0.5. Again, if I put hole equals zero, then there won't be a hole in this pie chart. Okay, so these were all the parameters that come automatically within the, the Plotly Express Pi method. In addition to that, you can play around with the styling and other things. And you do that with this. Okay, up pie chart, which is the name of my pie chart, the object, dot update traces. So you call the method update traces, and then we're going to look into all these. Where did I take these from? These come from here, another link below the video. These are the Plotly Graph Objects Pi, and you can see all the different parameters that you can use inside uh, that update traces. Some of them repeat what is inside of here, so you don't need to use some of them, uh, but we've used these. Okay. So if you need to, go over these, pause the video, read about them, and then look into um, what I'm doing right here. But let me explain. So we're going to save this, and we're going to execute it. And now we're going to look into how the pie chart has changed. Okay, let's start with text position. This is the text that's going to be um, inside the, uh, the slices of each pie. I'm going to say I want it to be outside. So it's actually not going to be inside, like default. It's going to be outside the slices right here you see the text is right here outside instead of inside right here and right here and I also want the text info to be percent plus label so I want to see the percent of the slices and the label which we said was state because that's what we call the names the names are the labels in this case state and we also said I want the marker open the dictionary, I want it to be, I want the lines inside the marker to be color black and the width four. So this is what you see here. These lines right here and this line and the line around all in black 
it has the width 4 and the color black. Uh, pool is a way to pull one of the slices. I have four slices, so I want the third slice to be pulled 0.2 out of the pie, and that's why you see this slice that's pulled out. If I wanted uh, the first slice, I would, I would click on this one and put 0.1 or however far I want it from the pie. And then opacity, this is the coloring. I don't want the, I want the opacity not to be that dark. So you see this is not as dark. If I put 0.1, this will be very, very light color. You will barely see the color. And the last one is rotation. So rotation is going to be 180. And that's why you see that this is upside down, right? See how the California is here and Washington is here. When you when the uh, when it was when it was zero by default rotation is zero, then California is here and Washington is here. So you see how the pie has turned 180 degrees. I think it can go all the way to 360. All right. So these are some of the uh, uh, ways to play around with uh, the layout or the trace of the pie chart. Again, use this uh, link below to play around with it and, and do other things with your pie chart. Um, but uh, there you have it. We just actually created a pie chart, played around with it, did all the styling and the shapes and the legend and the titles. Um, but you have this for yourself, so please play around with it. Just listening to me is is not the best way to learn. The best way to learn is, is playing around with all the data that I give you, all the graphs that I give you, and doing things on your own. And asking me, go into the YouTube channel, uh, go into the comments below the video and ask me, Adam, how do I do this? Or Adam, I'm trying to do this and I can't, I can't figure this out. I'm here to help you um, so you can learn more about the pie chart and how to do data visualizations all in Python. Um, uh, if you want to, you can click on the card above or the video that's going to come up here above my, uh, my head, my screen. Um, you can look at the scatter plot that we also have created, or you can look into other Plotly graphs and in the playlist of Plotly graphs or the other playlist that's the Dash interactive graphs that allows you to look at pie chart with a drop down and how we can combine both of them together to allow the user more fun functionality to play around with uh, the data and different charts, in this case the pie chart. Um, if you found value in this video, please subscribe below uh, so you can uh, learn more about videos that come out every week and hit the like button so um, everybody can uh, also enjoy this video and share with your friends. Um, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a good time. If there's anything you want to see, please let me know. Um, have a good day. Thank you.